You know, it's funny how these things work. Not long ago, I told you that this chip and this lack of a socket, but now there is a socket, might be the solution to my problem. However, I ran into other problems which I find hilarious because, well, that could just very well be the problem as well. This here is a little device I built. It's simply two dip sockets, a 16 pin, and two dip switches. The idea is that I can take a chip out, plug this in, put the chip on top, and then with the dip switches, I can turn pins on and off and selectively enable or disable whatever functions the chip is uh, providing. Um, I also have little spots here where I can hang my oscilloscope off if need be. But in inserting this damn thing into this socket, and this is these are regular size pins, um, that's it. This, this wipe socket is completely dead. Like, I can go all the way down, and yeah, it's no good. So, now I gotta go back and change this socket out with a turned one, because we might as well. And because at that point there we've done half of the chip sockets in this circuit, we'll take care of these two over here as well. Hurrah! All right, let's just get this thing pulled back apart without any more complaining or talking. Um, by the way, I mentioned this yesterday. This is branded by Sonic Technologies. Uh, it is not made by Sonic Technologies. I'm pretty sure there's a proper name for a tool like this that has the nice little hex tool on the back and a small Phillips on the front. Put that there, and we can unplug that and unplug that, and take out our lone screw. I'm going to turn my iron on. I want to do this as fast as possible because I just want to get back to doing other stuff tonight. And I'm pretty sure if this socket here sucks, the rest of them on here suck as well. But unless I start running into problems with them, I'm not going to change this out because, well, take a look how many sockets there are on this. All right. And again, just tin it with a little bit of solder so that the desoldering tool gets a little bit of an easier job and it's a 14 pin I did again let's turn my temperature up on the iron 640 degrees get to the other two sockets soon. And clean the tip. And away we go. Wait a minute. Yeah, I did it. Again, this video is unedited because this is another practicing with OBS because some of you would have noticed that the video yesterday was a bit choppy and a bit strange but hey this zoom h2 is doing a hell of a lot better than the audio we had on previous videos did we not I think I got that one first try Sockets already loose. And 
out it goes. And again, I'm just going to grab the chip here. And you might notice the vertical effect is missing here, and that's simply because I turned automatic focus off because I forgot to turn it off. But yeah, like it's not fitting in the socket anymore. It's just a loose fit. This is why I hate wipes. Um, sometimes they wear out, sometimes they're just crap. Like they're great. Um, I have an example here actually of, this is one of the wipe ram sockets that are used in the, uh, the pet, uh, the 8K pet. I believe the 4K uses it as well with those stupid run hot fail often ram chips and these sockets suck i went out and replaced all of those with turn sockets but i always just keep that one around as a specimen but we are going to replace that with my last 14 pin turn socket and that's going to stay in there and this time it's not going to stay in on its own so get the iron ready I'm just going to tan a pin. There we go. Can I get that? Yes. I... We'll do the other side. Then we'll reinforce that side, and off we go. Alright, so looks good, looks good. Now if I take our chip and press that in, that is a nice tight fit now. So that's not a problem. I've mentioned before about using screwdrivers as a chip extractor. Um, hold on. So I thought I had the proper chip extractor for these small ones. No, I keep forgetting I have this chip extractor here. This is great for much bigger chips and ROMs and stuff like that because it gets into them. That actually fell out pretty easily as well. Yay! Uh, and I cannot fall back in. Okay, no, that's still in there pretty tight. But yeah, it works great for the larger chips, stuff like CPU, uh, CPUs. Um, for you folks who have ceramic chips, again, uh, this here is the EX2 from OK Tools. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I believe there's knockoffs of it. They're great tools. Get your hands on one of these. Um, anyways, I do have to use a screwdriver, unfortunately, to remove the two ULNs. Put that one there there and these sockets seem solid but I bet you if I take my adapter here and just press it in like fits into the socket sure and I pulled it out now does the ULN fit in there again no okay so it might I can't tell if it's the socket or if it's for some reason it doesn't like these pins I'm not sure whatever We'll change the sockets out anyways. Um, it never hurts to replace them with new sockets because like I mentioned with the PET, nobody says the original manufacturer used good sockets in the first place. And the reason I'm adding solder that I'm going to immediately suck off anyways is that sometimes this desoldering tool gets a bit iffy, like sure, there's that perfect amount of solder on every joint, and sometimes it's just not enough for an optimal thermal contact. So you just kind of overfill the joint with more solder, and then the tool has no problems at all. Plus this, this, this process, this is not a, or, a slow process. You can just see me ripping through here. Again, who needs flux? Besides, any flux I do need, typically within a uh, flux core solder, that's enough. That's really all you need. All right. 
And did I grab? I just saw to the right ones. I keep thinking I got the wrong ones. Saw solder flow back onto that one. There we go. Sockets already wobbling. And out it came. So I'm just gonna put that there. pressing the tool straight into these pads because it will rip up those pads and traces. I'm just basically using the weight of the tool on the point and then just kind of wobbling it back to back and forth a bit. And that's all it takes. Because you can really gouge out the board if you aren't careful with these cheaper irons. Hell, even even with the good irons, you can do that. It's all about being patient. And this socket's gonna fall out as well. It fell out. All right, so we're done with the soldering tool. So I'm just going to clean that and <clears throat> empty out my solder reservoir. Because you really do need to keep these cool tools clean because an abused one won't last all that long. All right, so here are our two craptacular sockets and I can get, who makes them? Cambion? C-A-M-B-I-O-N? USA? Uh, I, whatever. Okay. Well, they're junk now. And unfortunately, I don't have turn sockets for these things. So as much as I don't want to, hey look, more wiping style sockets. Huh. <sighs> All right, well, I'll put that in. There we go. And I have another one here. I will put that one in. And if I don't like these, I will not bend one of the or two of these pins because it makes desoldering and removing them very easy. And because I was very gentle on the desoldering, my pads are still in excellent shape, and I can do this again. There we go. And just attack down. Some people will use their fingers. That's fine. So everything aligned. Everything looks aligned. And back to soldering we go. I understand that lead is a rather bad neurotoxin, 
but considering how much easier it is to work with compared to lead-free, and how uh, tin migration and whiskers is something I really don't have to deal with with leaded solder, um, I, I still will always endorse people, please use leaded solder. Yes, I understand. You shouldn't be eating food or, um, like, wiping your face and stuff like that after handling it, so wash your hands. But it makes these repairs so much faster. And it makes a lot more of these cheap Chinese tools um, that much easier to use. Like this iron here maxes out at 850 degrees. And that is... That, that's barely usable. Sure, you can do lead-free with that. But I find that unless you're very careful and you keep your tip maintained, you'll burn through these really quickly. So there's another advantage right there. All right, so now I can put you back into place. Is there a date code on this? 8426. Uh, which coincides with the 1984 date stamp on this. Same thing, 8426. Those feel like they have a much nicer fit in them. Oh, let's turn my iron off and clean it. All right, well, didn't have to use my desoldering tool there. Now, back onto the profile you go. There we go. And our two back screws. Never, ever torque these too hard because you will stack uh, the heads off, the standoffs. And then you got a fun one. Um, and of course, if you run them too loose, the standoffs come out with whatever cable you have attached. I know some people who use Loctite. Not much, but just enough. All right, so I'm going to try this again, but I'm going to keep this time the stepper motor facing towards the microphone, which is hiding just over here. Um, again, you are probably not going to see anything, um, and I will. I doubt this is going to fix much, but it'll be an improvement. Uh, but will it explode? Light came on. Yeah, it's still misstepping, so. Didn't solve all my problems, but at least I now know that those sockets at least are okay. And that's that. I'm gonna go off and do my own little thing here. And I hope you watch me redo this soldering work again. And until next time, have a good one.